Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin and just want to do a little bit of housekeeping first and foremost. Uh, thanks to everyone who watches the video, shares, likes, subscribes, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, we all here appreciate it and um, we'll try to continue to give you some information that's fun, entertaining, educational, all of those things uh, at one time. So also, uh, if you don't know, when we make videos where we show coins or other items, oftentimes at the time of the video, you can go ahead and look to see if that item's available for sale. And that'll oftentimes be either on our website or on eBay or both sometimes. Um, it usually is a little cheaper for you to buy it from our website, just so you know, a little FYI. If you want to find out, usually right below the title of the video, there's this little section that's not always visible. Sometimes if you're on your phone, you have to click on it and it'll expand and it'll show you know that there's uh, there's some some links in there. Like you click on the link, it'll take you directly to the item on our website or on eBay or what have you. Also, of course, we do have memberships as well. Uh, the membership levels basically are uh, one's more of just a hat tip, like here you go. Uh, thanks for, for putting out videos, Ben and, and everybody. We appreciate that. And the other one for a buck more, you get a little bit extra content. We have a weekly roundup and we throw out some more behind the scenes videos once in a while. So all of that to say, let's move on, shall we? Because today I want to talk to you about something that's a little bit unusual and something that is in the collecting world, but it may be something that you really know nothing about and uh, maybe you'll find out that I know nothing about also, but I think I know a little bit about, and those are called NFTs. An NFT is a non-fungible token. Now that may all be gibberish to you as it is to me at times, but all that means is that it is like a digital image, a digital picture, but it has a very unique code to it so it can't be reproduced, okay? This is all that so-called blockchain technology they talk about. You know, you cannot reproduce this item. It is known, it is secure, and the idea is that you're purchasing this item and you own it. You own a digital image, all right? That's what an NFT is. Now, the question is, of course, for all of us out in the collector world, like, should I mess with NFTs? Should I collect them? What is, what's the future of, of these gonna be? What do you think will happen down the road? And uh, I'm gonna combine a few different ideas that I've had over the years and we've talked about before and apply it to NFTs and see what type of an outcome we have. Uh, first and foremost, the collector markets for everything changes over time, right? So uh, people collect different things for different generations. Some things tend to be long lasting or tend to be fairly long lasting. So in other words, um, you know, there still is a coin and currency market. Uh, the stamp market, maybe not so much. We have fewer and fewer stamp collectors. Uh, you know, the baseball market looked like it was dead a decade ago, and now all of a sudden, boom, it's here alive again. Uh, and so it's really interesting to see how they can wax and wane with time. But you will see collectors collect on what I call like a generational curve. So for example, for car collectors, uh, you know, people tend to collect their youth and things from their youth. And so what you'll see is certain decades move in and out of vogue over time. And this is consistent across most collecting areas, whether it's toys or cars or even coins, you'll see people collect things differently based on what they remember from their childhood. So you'll, you saw for a time, it was all about the Model A's and Model T's and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it was some of these classic 40s. Muscle cars at that time, 20 years ago, were dirt cheap, nobody cared. And then all of a sudden it was like, everyone wants their their, their college or high school first muscle car. They, they also are now in their 50s or 60s and they finally have money to buy stuff with. And so all that money gets funneled back into this collector market, right, this one area. So uh, with NFTs, well, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? So what it, what it means in my mind for NFTs is that you're gonna have people that I think down the road are still gonna collect these things. This is an ominous thing for me to say out loud because I, I'll be honest with you, I don't get it. I mean, I understand kind of how it works, uh, but but the other thing that I always wanna apply is is economics, which is supply and demand. So the hard part for me is that the supply side of this is you can make as many of these things as you want. Of course, they do make limited quantities of all these images and pictures that, that come out, right? Uh, the weird part for me though is on the demand side, where will it be Where will it be in 10, 20, 30 years? That's really hard to predict specifically to each NFT. All right, and this is where it gets a little dicey because certainly there'll be people who wanna collect NFTs down the road. This is, this is to me the part that like, okay, NFTs are here to stay, they're long-term, right? But uh, will they be valuable? And if so, which ones? 
So this becomes a whole lot more like thinking about, about stocks, right? Where you have two companies launching at the same time, both in the same industry, and you kind of pick one over the other. You're like, oh, no, 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 definitely, definitely it's going to be, you know, beta is the way to go. Don't just stay away from these VHSs, right? And then you find out later, like, oh, I went the wrong way on that, right? So um, in, in what happens is generally you have certain things that really take take hold as the major leader in the industry. This is true in things even like baseball cards where you have some pretty neat cards that are pretty scarce, but they're just not as popular. This happens all the time in coins where you'll see coins that are a lot more technically rare, but the demand isn't there to push them up, right? So we talk about this for us coin collectors, how if you go to any any larger show, you'll find dozens of, of 1909 SVDBs in different grades available for sale, you know, but go try to find a real nice 14D in high grade at that same show and you'll be, you'll, you'll find out just how hard it is. Um, you know, and there's other, obviously lots of examples where you have certain proof type coins that are a lot less expensive than their, their um, uncirculated counterpart, even though there is like 10 or 20 fold or even more difference or hundredfold in a lot of cases difference between the mintages right so there's the supply side then there's the demand side so which nfts are going to be here to stay is the part where it's like anybody's guess right which ones which ones are going to grab the the conscious and hold you know hold it steady for a long period of time we just we just don't know right so you know i look back at pokemon cards and i think ah Who's gonna buy? Who's gonna buy that stuff, right? And then you, you turn around, you know, two, three decades later, and all of a sudden, oh, that's right, the next generation that liked them, you know. So, uh, of course, the quick advice is don't buy anything that you don't know or understand. So, I'm not recommending anyone just go out and buy NFTs. Um, you know, there is there is some question on my, in on my part as to whether or not you'll see or how much of this you'll see in the coin world, because I believe this is this is coming to the coin world. I think that's something that, um, you know. It, it'll be here before you know it. And then at that point, it's just a matter of how many people are going to get into that market, right? How many people are going to get convinced to go into that marketplace at any given time? Are they going to risk their money up front and hope that whatever NFTs they bought, whatever images they buy, there'll be a market for them later? So think of buying something like baseball cards or something along those lines, only you own it on your phone instead of owning it in physical real life. And uh, if you get something with a very limited production level or mintage, uh, then at that point, you just hope that down the road, there's still a lot of demand for it. So let me know what you guys think about the future of NFTs. I actually think they're here to stay. I think generationally, they're going to be good in the long run. But I think it's not like um, startup stocks. I don't know that you can really predict which ones are going to be big. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.